So pay attention to Genesis 12, 2. Put it up for me. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The word blessing there is the word bereka. Bereka. B-E-R-A-K-A-H. Bereka. The word blessing. What do you mean thou shalt be a blessing? Many times when people hear the word blessing, the first thing on their mind is, I will give you money so you can give others. I will make you rich so that you will be wealthy and be sharing for others. That's a funny theology. Very funny. If you believe that God makes people rich so that the rich can give to the poor, then it means God is the inventor of class in society. Then it means God is a hypocrite. It means, God is a it means God is behind all the evils of society. It means it is God that grades some people poor and grades some people rich and grades some people very wealthy. It means God is the inventor of class in society. And oppression in society is because of class. That's, that's where oppression comes from. The reason why Russia is fighting Ukraine is to gain global dominance and China is refusing to join the fight because China wants to dominate both Russia and America dominance it's my it's men that created class not God so God doesn't bless some people financially and leave some people so when you see the word blessing don't think of money, car, and house because that's not what the Bible is talking about. Since the Bible is a book of salvation, the terms used in it must be connected to the plan of God, which is salvation. Am I communicating at all? If you're catching the flow, shout, I hear, I hear, I hear. Now, so the word blessing is what brought us into all of this. The word blessing there is not car, house. Remember, Abraham was already a wealthy man. He was already rich. How do we know that? Genesis chapter 11. Look at verse 31. Genesis 11:31. 31. And Terah took Abraham his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son, Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from all of the childies to go into a land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. These guys were wealthy. These guys were already established. Genesis chapter 12. I mean, look at Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, before we read 12. Genesis 13, verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. The guy was not a poor guy. Abraham was very rich. Genesis 12, verse 5. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 5. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance, all their what? Substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and came into the land of Canaan. They came. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 6. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanites was then in the land. Now, so these guys had substance. Look at Genesis 12, 16. Genesis 12, 16. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and main servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. These guys were rich. So he had all of that. Abraham wasn't a poor man. So the blessing God is referring to here is not all of this material stuff. If you followed from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, you know what the blessing is. Then you know the blessing is not material. Genesis 27, 12, there's a popular story to help us understand that word blessing. Genesis chapter 27, verse number 12. My father per adventure will fill me, this is Jacob and Esau, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. This is when the mother was telling Jacob, we are a make-believe, Esau, so that you can be like Esau. Then go before your father and deceive your father. Collect the blessing that your father is about to give Esau. These are no properties we are talking about. 
And then Jacob, I mean, yeah, Jacob said to the mother, my father will discover that it is not me and he will curse me. Okay, now, remember the mother said, let the curse be upon me. How many of you remember that? Okay, look at verse 35 of Genesis 27, verse 35. Rebecca in action. Genesis 27, 27, 35. And he said, thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away the blessing. He had not taken away the car. He had not taken away the house because if it's the house and the car, the elder brother could have gone after him and collected it. That means what he has taken away is what you cannot collect. I'm teaching good here. The blessing is not tangible. The blessing is intangible. The blessing is not intangible. It's not immaterial. It's intangible. After the father had prayed for him and laid hands on him, now when you come to the new testament you will call prayer and laying of hands impartation and ordination so what the father did to jacob was impartation and ordination that's why esau couldn't go to collect it because it's not something collectible i'm teaching good this morning now also pay attention to this so he lays his hands on him he came close to him what we call he ministered to him new testament language he ministered to him. Then when he is gone, Esau came in. Genesis 27, 33. <clears throat> Genesis 27, 33. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Even your coming cannot change it. I have blessed him. Now that you have come, let me reiterate. He is blessed. It's irrevocable. The blessing is irrevocable. Once God puts his blessing on you, which you received at salvation, is irrevocable. It's irreversible. In the shadows, Balaam said, cause Israel. Balak said, how can I cause a man whom God has blessed? God has blessed him. I cannot curse him. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with how many? All oh, spiritual blessing. Is it temporal or eternal? Eternal. What God gives is permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me. It shall. You know, even those churches where they say you can lose salvation, they sing this song. So I wonder what in their own understanding shall be permanent. I think it's car, wife, children. You see how low that mentality is. So car can be permanent. House can be permanent. Even though we know that car cannot be permanent. We know that house cannot be permanent. Go to Bayelsa. You will discover that house cannot be permanent. I'm talking to somebody here. You will discover in Bayelsa. Go to Kogi State. Lokoja. You will discover that cars cannot be permanent. More monies cannot be permanent. How? Oh, did you see the trailer full of Nara? Full of Nara that is grinded. The grinded Nara. And filled a trailer. In fact, somebody said to me, that trailer's only is a child's play that people have so much money in this country that they don't even know what to do with it they put it where the money gets rotten and spoiled a whole trailer load and they are not in need of it that can be the blessing that can be the blessing Every time I say to you, God will bless you, or you are blessed, or be blessed. Stop thinking of cars. Think about spiritual stuff. Think about the things that control the planet. I'm teaching good. You remember one time in this country where a man built an entire warehouse and filled it with money in Kaduna? But generators, light never went out in that building. For years, people wondered what is inside that building. Light can never go out. And people are not there. Until the day his sister did, we still blowing on him. 
because she asked him to help her pay her child's school fees. He did not pay. So she did wish to, and they say, if you do wish to blow in, 10% of the money they will give you from government. So she said, ah, oh, what did they wait for? School fees, you know. I'm, I'm, Then they went and discovered it's a warehouse of money. This country. I'm not going anywhere. I know the Japa. We will share this money together. You want Japa? No Japa. We full ground. Turn to your neighbor and say, whatever Jesus does is permanent. Tell somebody, whatever God gives is permanent. Say, God does not give temporal stuff. The blessing of God is immaterial, irreversible, irrevocable. They are permanent. I thought I would hear a good amen. amen. What the Lord has done is permanent. Give me a few minutes. I want to finish this in this service but from the way i'm looking at time i can't finish it i'll have to finish it in the next service then maybe start the new series another sunday is that good okay are you enjoying this okay so pay attention here now as i wrap up this service so now the blessing is not material this is not a question of you finding out you know uh it's not like uh, Israel, uh jacob has collected the wheel that i wrote the will if it's a will they will have looked for the lawyer and make the lawyer change the, the articles of the will okay so it is nothing to do with that he found out that he had prophesied by the spirit to the second son and not the first he has prophesied he has spoken words of the spirit into the life of the second of course the argument comes but the second son lied and the first child is not the one that got the blessing but don't forget that when they were born when they were born the parents knew by the spirit that there were two nations and the younger will rule over the older but much later Jacob will come to himself and then repent but the dad knew what had happened that day because the dad has seen it before at the time of their birth so when he does that look at what he said in Genesis 27 35 Genesis 27 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing look at verse 36 and he said is not he rightly named Jacob for he has supplanted me these two times he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou not reserved a blessing for me look at verse 38 same chapter verse 38 Genesis 27 and Esau said unto his father has thou has thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also oh my father and Esau lifted up his voice and wept okay so when they say birthright blessing birthright blessing look at the words because birthright and the blessing will deal with functioning in your father's office birthright and blessing will mean functioning in your father's office in his inheritance and in his possession in your father's office in his inheritance and in your possession that's the meaning of birthright when this event took effect that's not like writing a will functioning in your father's office in his possession and in his inheritance is a spiritual operation who was isaac let's answer a few things the question is who was isaac's father his father was 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 abraham who was abraham abraham was a prophet god's spokesman a prophet in nabi so in their culture and you know they still do that today in our african culture when a man has a traditional office or title he passes it to his son usually his first son like the chief or the king of your locality so usually it's expected that ishmael will be the one because ishmael was older 
than Isaac. Or they expected it would be Cain and not Abel. But the story of Genesis is the story of God's grace that it is not works. The story of Genesis is a story of grace and not works. So it is not Cain, it is Abel. It is not Ishmael, it is Isaac. It is not Esau, it is Jacob. What's going on here? You see men begin to occupy the office of the prophet or men began to become ministers of God's word in the earth. That is the birthright. The birthright is to be called into a privileged office to preach the gospel. The birthright is to be called into the mandate of God as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Naturally, it should fall to Esau. But that's not how it works. It works by grace. Not of works lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. So it falls on Jacob, not Esau. Now people have thought he is talking about money. No. If you keep reading on, Cain was a very wealthy guy. Cain built cities. In fact, his children began to have inventions. They had machine guns. They owned cities. I'm talking about Cain. It's only in Africa when you are poor you say you are cursed. The first man that was under a curse in the Bible, his name was Cain. With the curse, he built cities. With the curse, he built towers. So your poverty is not a curse. It's a mental lack of exercise. It's not a curse. Cain was cursed. He, he built cities, invented machine guns machine gun back in Genesis 4 under the cause because the cause is not in material the cause is not to be welcomed the blessing is to be welcomed into the into the grace of God and into the ministry of the gospel I'm teaching God the blessing is that office you will be a blessing and indeed shall all nations of the earth be blessed blessed at the feet of those who bring good tidings blessed referring to the office of the minister of the gospel the office of the prophet of god in the earth say with me i am an able minister of the new testament i wear the blessing oh you didn't say it well i wear the blessing one more time i wear the blessing I wear irrevocable blessing irreversible blessing is that not why he said the gift and callings of God are without his irrevocable blessing if you read chapter 25 where there was a conversation between Jacob and Esau where Jacob said give me your birthright and Esau said who cares about the birthright I'm hungry did you say that if I say from now you are the first born, I'm the last born, you will give me porridge. Yes. If you agree that from today I take over your place in this family, I will give you porridge. You say, What is space? First born. What did I go carry first born? What is first born? What is first born? What is the call of God to ministry? We are talking about making money in IT world. And Papa is talking about God has called you, God has called you, God has called you. What about all the others that God has called? Let them be doing me, I will make money. You are a profane person. You are a man of no value. It means you have not understood what it truly means to be blessed. Esau said what is birthright? Take and give me food. Bible called him a profane man. A man of no value. And when the chips came down, Esau now discovered that the man that takes the bad right will take the blessing. Once you give away the bad right, you have given the blessing. Once you refuse the call of God to ministry, you have refused the blessing. The blessing is to be called of God to preach the gospel. Blessed at the feet of those who bring good tidings blessed to be a blessing until all the families of the earth are blessed who will have all men to be saved the blessing 
I am sure that when I come, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. The blessing is the preaching of the gospel. The blessing is the call of God to evangelize, to raise disciples on the earth. And the blessing is to be an ambassador of the message of Christ. I, I thought somebody would shout a powerful amen. But Esau was a profane guy. Spiritual things didn't matter to him. There are people like that. Let me warn you, Power City, let me warn you. Never speak lightly of spiritual gifts. Never speak lightly of the call of God. Because you will never flow in it. What you disdain, you cannot function in. What you despise, you cannot enjoy. You use your mouth anyhow to speak about the things that God honors. You must honor what God honors. If you don't honor what God honors, you can never be honored. Let me tell you something. I think I said this in Lagos or something. I said to them, you know what? If when you get offended at people that bless you, you are in dishonor. Offense is a mark that you have crossed the boundary. Offense. Because somebody you are in reverence of, somebody you respect and honor, even if he says something you don't like, you will excuse it. You say, maybe there is an interpretation to what he's saying that I did not get. You will look for reasons because you respect and love the person. It's only when you have seen somebody finish that you can be angry that he said something. It's familiarity. And once familiarity steps in, dishonor goes out. And when you are in honor, you will never see what God is. And when you are in dishonor, you will never see what God is. It's because of familiarity that you are getting offended. Because if there was no familiarity, you will excuse why, honey, Jesus called the woman dog. Dog! You say, yes, Lord, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. If you say I'm a dog, who am I to say I'm not a dog? She And then she now looked for an excuse to be a dog and still be blessed. She said, but sir, even the dogs eat the crumbs. That the woman was too much in honor not to be blessed. Even when a word that should be an insult was used on her, she excused it away. You know why you're offended because we talk to you like that? Because you don't see us finish. If you never see us finish and we say something to you that we ought not to say, you will excuse it. Look at Eli. Eli, the woman is praying in the church. Eli comes and says, drunkard, you drunkard. This woman, you like beer too much. You do the drink to Mbo. Pami, Pami, Pami. And you don't drink fresh Pami. You drink Pami that has been around for five years drunk you don't insult the woman finish the woman stood up and said no my lord ay, 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 ay. if i close this service i have had a nice time the woman said no my lord how can you it shows you the one was not offended you can't be in offense and call somebody my lord no my lord even though the the the, the minister her pastor miscalculated and spoke what he ought not to speak to her but she was too much in honor to be offended no my lord i'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit my heart is so sorrowful that's why i came before god to pour out my heart the same man that called her drunkard said stand up and go your prayer is answered now imagine if she had insulted the prophet she will not get that release when you are in dishonor, you lose the blessing. You lose the blessing that the gospel ought to bring. Paul said, I am sure that when I come, I will come in the blessing. What am I bringing the blessing for? To impart you. I long to see you. That I may impart spiritual gifts to you. To the end that you may be established. But when you are in dishonor, it's easy to be offended. It's easy to take offense. It's easy to say, why will you talk to me like that? Look at the way you looked at me. I even told Papa like this. Look at what he said to me. I don't even understand nowadays. I don't understand. He go to social media and he call himself a man of God. Dot, 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 dot. 98 Waniba Road. Yeah. 
social media has made everybody vocal you become a profane person you become a person of no value look at jesus look at peter and say get the hands behind me satan you suffer not the thing look when you suffer the things of god you can't be offended he said great peace have they that love your lord and nothing shall offend them the call to to walk with christ is a call to an honorable lifestyle a life of honor a life of honor a life of honor where there is zero tolerance for offense you never get offended yeah things will come that will upset you but you are in honor to refuse to take the offense am i teaching good here yeah things will come things will come esau was a man of no value and he lost the blessing jacob desired the blessing at all cost he gave his porridge he even came to the father and deceived the father because he had value for the blessing and he got it he got it the call of god the mandate to preach the gospel every time we tell you go to preach the gospel what we're unleashing you into is into the blessing every time we say go for evangelism we're unleashing you into the blessing every time they say come and teach sunday school we are unleashing you into the blessing I'm, I'm teaching good this morning the blessing of the lord is not tangible is intangible it's not visible is invisible it's not material it's immaterial and it is irrevocable i told somebody we shout hallelujah get on your feet i finish the rest of this in the second service glory to god are you blessed this morning walk to two three people tell them i am too much in honor to be offended i refuse to be offended there's a call of god on my life and i refuse to give the devil room at any juncture in my life i know there's a mandate there's an assignment there's a mission of god on the earth and that mission has conferred on me the blessing i am a carrier of the blessing tell your neighbor when i visit you i'm bringing the blessing now let me ask all of you a question if i visit you and i bring gossip is that the blessing if I visit you and I say, let's study the Bible, is that the blessing? If I visit you and say, can we pray for a few minutes? What is that? So let us always fellowship around the blessing. I am an ah. Let's always fellowship where? When we see each other. Mento labara katana. Mango lebasaka. When we meet one another, we fellowship in the light. Somebody shout glory. I say shout glory. Say, I wear the blessing. I preach the gospel in and out of season i preach the gospel in and out of season by the mandate of god upon my life i declare i will serve the purpose of god to my generation all the days of my life i thought i will hear powerful amen. amen lift your right hands father thank you for grace and mercy thank you for the blessing this morning your word has gone forth with power and clarity and we decree that right here in this house ministers of the gospel all over the world in our campuses online ministers of the gospel are rising who will preach the gospel of christ the blessing of god righteousness by faith righteousness without works justification by faith men that will preach the finished work men that will preach the full counsel of god they are rising in this house they are rising in this house they are rising in our campuses they are rising online they are rising all over the world we will shine the light of the gospel until all families of the earth are blessed father we give you praise thank you for the honor to preach the gospel thank you for the honor to be co-laborers together with you and i declare everyone in this building you walk worthy of the lord you walk worthy of the lord you walk worthy of the lord in the name of jesus thank you father for answered prayer in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen like thunder well, give the Lord a praise for another 30 seconds.